Hello, my name is Vince Kramer. Today I'll be taking you on a visual tour of the NetBeans 7.0 Milestone 2 integration with Glassfish Server Readout 1. The integration starts right at the download page. When you download NetBeans 7.0 Milestone 2, you'll also be downloading Glassfish Server Open Source Edition Readout 1 Build 24. Let's take a look at what's available once you start NetBeans after install. You'll see that Glassfish Server 3.1 has already been registered and is ready for use. Let's start it up and we'll take a look at what's available. As the server starts, it also starts the integrated Java DB. In our demonstration today, we'll be using both a local and a remote server on the local machine, we'll be using the Apple JDK, NetBeans 7.0 Milestone 2, and Glassfish Server 3.1 Build 24. The remote server is running Open Solaris. It's got the Oracle JDK, Update 21, and another build of Glassfish Server Build 24. So right now, what we'll need to do is register that remote server. While we're registering the remote server, we'll also take a look at some of the other features that are available in the registration wizards. So after we've named our server, we need to tell it which bits to use for doing things like class path completion, etc. And we'll just use the build 24 bits that were installed when the IDE was installed. Now let's take a look at this page for a moment. You'll see that normally it shows up with register local domain and it would register domain one. Since domain one is already registered, we could say could ask the IDE to register domain two. Since there isn't a domain two, it will build a new domain two for us. Now if the domain one server hat was not running, we could ask it to use the same ports as domain one. Right now, that feature is disabled because domain one is running. I'm going to register a remote server. That remote server is on my network. You can see that the server is running. Let's be in that remote server see that we have a remote application. And also, there's a new set of nodes available from the integration for web services. We have a deployed application. We also have a deployed web service. On web services, there's two actions. There's the test action and the copy action. The test action fires up the web-based tester. The copy action copies the WSGL URL into the paste buffer. One of the other new features that's available is you're allowed to enable and disable deployed applications. If we disable this audited services application, you'll notice that the web services are no longer available. When we enable the audited services, the web service returns. Another new feature is the ability to restart remote servers. Third new feature is the ability to view the server log of a remote server. So we'll fire that and we'll see that right now there's no activity on that server, so we'll generate some. We'll go and we will test the audited service. That brings up the test web page. You'll see that it runs the test. If we go back to the IDE, we'll also notice that there's data in the server log. Now we'll copy the WSGL URLs and create a web app that uses that web service. We'll accept the default values and then click Finish.
the IDE opens the new web project. We expand the project and then create a new servlet. I'm going to uncomment the code that is automatically generated by the new servlet wizard so that we have some interesting output from this. Next, I'll create a new web service client based on the WSDL URL that I had previously copied into the paste buffer. Now I'll leverage that web service client and, in, and call the operation from inside my server. This wizard adds data and code to the servlet. Next, we'll set the default run target to actually call our servlet. Project, project deploys locally. Output of the audit and echo service is available in the remote server log. Now I'm going to extend this web application with JPA entities so that we can demonstrate application scope resources. You'll notice that the resource definition file has had its name changed to glassfishresources.xml. You can leverage application scoped resources if you're using glassfish 3.1 by moving the glassfishresources.xml file to the webinf directory of your web app. Whenever you deploy this app onto Glasswish 3.1, even if the server does not have the resources that are described in this file, the deployment process will actually create those resources for you. One important thing to remember is that after you've moved the file to its new location, IDE also follows it so that as you create new, new resources using either the wizard, those updates go into the file so that when you deploy, all of the stuff gets deployed. That pretty much covers the new features that are available for Glassfish Server 3.1 in NetBeans 7, Milestone 2. Thank you.